Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Many of you probably know that over the past month or so, I've been doing videos on Luminar AI. I was fortunate enough to get a beta version of the software. And over the past month or so, they've updated that beta version now three times, I believe. I just got a new update today. Now, what I wanna do in this video is I wanna talk about things that I've talked about in previous videos that kind of have changed. They've changed these things in this latest update. A couple things I talked about previously are now missing, and I wanna mention that. And also something I mentioned in the past, actually in the last video I did last week, um, they've made it better, and I wanna talk about that. And we're going to just process this image along the way because I still get a lot of requests from people asking me if I could demonstrate how I process a specific image uh, in Luminar AI. So we have this image here. Uh, first of all, uh, what I found with each update, the template um, kind of recognition, what it, like, because Luminar AI will look at your image, decide what's in it, and then recommend templates for it. The template recognition is much better. So it always seems to get it right, like landscape, scenery, natural skies. So right away, you know, these are recommendations for this image. And with my first beta version of Luminar AI, sometimes I'd get portrait thrown in there or something like that. So it was kind of confused. But with each um, iteration of the beta that I've been using, it's improved. And now it <laughs> pretty much nails it every time. But I'm not going to use a template. We'll go right to the edit. And I want to talk about uh, composition AI. Uh, in the past, I always found with the previous versions, it was kind of not that great. Uh, it seems to be a lot better now. I'll do it on this image. You could see it put the, um, the lighthouse right at a rule of thirds. Um, I think it did a really good job. Now, just to, uh, if you want to uh, commit to that uh, crop, just close down the composition AI uh, tool and it commits to the crop. So composition AI has improved considerably. I want to go to light. Now you probably remember in the very last video I did, which is actually a week ago today, I mentioned that if you want to get a white and black point, uh, you have to hit the J key, but you have to have the histogram open for that to work. Well, now they fixed it, so you don't need the histogram open. For example, I'll go to this image here and I'll just like put exposure all the way up. Now, without the histogram being open, I'll just hit the J key and you can see that I get that red overlay. Uh, that's telling me I'm clipping the highlights. So I didn't need the histogram open, whereas before I used to. And if you're wondering uh, where the histogram is, it's under view, and it's down here at the bottom, histogram. And you could open it if you want. There it is right there. If you want to close it, you have to go back up to view, show histogram. There's no keyboard shortcut. I wish they had a keyboard shortcut. It would make it a lot easier. So that is something that has changed. Uh, see that J key? Uh, still is active and you can see how I blew down here. That means I'm clipping uh, those shadows. But let's go down. Let's process this. We'll open up the shadows, bring in the highlights. Um, we'll go to the whites and blacks and we'll bring up the whites, whites, whites till I get some red coming through and you can see some reds just barely coming through right there. So we'll back it off. And then I want a little bit of clipping, although I'm probably going to mess with that later with a brush because I want to show you some things with the brush. So uh, that's good. Now when I want to turn these clipping indicators off, you can see I still have blue. Just hit that J key again so I turn those off. So that helps. All right, I do have a considerable amount of noise. I think this was shot at ISO 800. It was um, very early in the morning. Actually, just the sun was just rising because I wanted to get a, a shot of this lighthouse with the light on. And it <laughs> turned out kind of un underwhelming. But uh, I'll go to denoise. I'll zoom in with denoise and uh, I'll bump that way up. Get some color denoise. I wanna, I wanna make this real kind of dreamy looking. Yeah, so I wanna really smooth out that noise, and I did. So we did that. Um, let's see. We'll go to enhance. Uh, let's go to AI accent. Tweak that up a little bit. Sky enhancer. Tweak that up a little bit. Okay, it's coming along. Uh, so far, so good. I, I like doing details and or structure later in the um, in my processing. I don't like to do it early, so I'll wait on that. Bring gold or golden hour up a little bit. Foliage enhancer. There's no foliage, so it's not really doing anything. Um, 
typically when I was there, this was a really nice mix of warm and cool tones. Uh, the clouds were kind of a bluish gray, but we had this part in here. And this part in here was more yellowish orange, and it really didn't come out. Also, the light in the lighthouse was actually a lot brighter than it's coming through in the image uh, here. So I kind of want to make sure that I, I replicate that or I kind of gain that back. So what I'm going to do is I'll go to the Creative tab, and um, I'm going to go to Mood, and I want to use a LUT. So I'm going to open up the LUTs, and uh, there's a couple different ones that I think might work. I know Anaheim is, is a little warmer, but I don't care for those, any of these. 1960, no, a little bit too matte for me. Um, candlelight is the one that I was thinking of. There's without, there's with, without with. A little more subtle than I thought it might be, but that one I might go. Uh, Color Punch Hot is the other one. Um, I think we'll just go with candlelight. It's a little more subtle, but I kind of like it. I could bring the amount up if I want. Yeah, that's good. Bring saturation up a little bit. That looks good. All right, so we added that. I'm going to go to toning. Specifically, I want to go to the highlights. Uh, you can't move U until you move saturation to the right. And once I do, I'm going to put U somewhere uh, between orange and yellow. Um, these are U angles. And if you're familiar with U angles, like a U angle of 60 is yellow. A U angle of around 37 is orange. So I just want to, and you could just eyeball it. I mean, you could tell. So turn it up a little bit. So we're going to bring that kind of bring that warmer tones back into the highlights is what I'm doing there. All right. So far, uh, so good. I don't think I'm going to do anything else with those right now. Now, what I want to show you is another thing that has changed. In a previous version, I showed you some of the local masking you could do. And you go over here with this little uh, kind of little pen looking. It says local masking. And when you turn that on, then you could add a local mask. I'm going to click add. And you can see there's only basic and texture. In the past, there was like basic texture and I think face and skin or maybe just face or maybe just skin. I can't remember. But there was other things here beside just these two choices. Um, I don't know if this is going to be the way it's, it will be when it's released on December 15th, whether they just temporarily took it out of the beta and it's going to be added back. I don't know. I am going to email them and ask. Uh, I haven't emailed them yet though, uh, but I will. And, um, you know, hopefully uh, I find out soon, but we'll go to basic. Uh, what I want to do is this area here, it's just kind of real muddy looking, right? So I want to kind of take care of that. So what we'll do is I'm going to take exposure up. You see how it's taking exposure up everywhere? Well, I'm going to then paint, and wherever I paint is where it will uh, apply that exposure adjustment. And uh, there's really no brush adjustments that you could see right here, uh, except for way over here, you could see. All right, see that? So we could do radius, softness. You also could use the... Um, uh, the reason why I brought that up, I'm sorry, is because I typically used to the older versions. I could, I was looking up here for brush adjustments and they're right here. Uh, anyway, uh, the bracket keys will make the brush smaller or larger. Also, if you hold the shift key in and hit, uh, the bracket key, you'll change the uh, softness of the brush. Okay. See how it's changed. You can see it's changing here right on the brush itself, but it's not changing there. That's interesting. All right. So I digress. Let's get a smaller brush and start painting in here. You can see how now it just will apply that adjustment right there. And there it is. All right, we'll get a smaller brush. We'll paint up through here. That kind of just looks muddy. All right. All right, now I, I haloed it a little bit, so I want to remove the adjustment uh, from there. I'm going to hold the Alt or Option key in. It's Alt if you have PC Option if you Mac. And when you do that, it will automatically switch to the Eraser tool. Just keep holding that Alt or Option key in when you do it. And we'll just remove that from there. All right. There. And that might be a little too bright, so we'll bring exposure down. And we're going to open up the shadows a little bit. And we're going to add some saturation there. All right, so that's uh, local adjustments. I wanted to show you that because that has changed from the last time I demoed it. I'm going to go back to the Essentials panel and go back to Light. And what I want to do is, um, no, I'm going to go to, I'm sorry, color. 
And I'm going to go to saturation. Just try to bring up saturation a little bit. And then I'll go to details now. And I want to go to small detail. I want to bring up more detail in the uh, lighthouse. So we're going to add some sharpness to the lighthouse. But you can see it's adversely affecting the sky. It's making the sky bring out some noise. And it's adversely affecting the water. So what I want to do is I want to mask that so that it's just affecting the lighthouse and maybe the land uh, around the lighthouse. So what we'll do is we'll click on the little mask tool right here. Uh, we're going to paint in the adjustment. So we're on the brush. And same thing, we'll just paint now right on, on the lighthouse and maybe on the land here. And then let go. And now that, uh, um, that adjustment is only on the lighthouse. You could see that if I just max these out, it's only affecting the lighthouse and the land where I painted. It's not affecting anything else. So we'll reset that, reset that. Let me bring that down a touch. So that looks better. Now, one more thing maybe I want to do. I'm going to go to the professional uh, panel. I'm going to go to color harmony. I want to make it a tiny bit warmer. Go there. Um, I want to go to split color warmth. Um, I'm going to make the warmer parts a little warmer. Kind of bring back that warmer tones that I saw when I was there. And um, I'm not going to do anything with that cool slider. We'll leave that alone. And I'd say I'm pretty much done. We'll jump back up to the Essentials, Essentials panel. I'll go to the Vignette tool. I will give it a kind of a darker vignette around the edges. And that's a little closer to what it actually looked like when I was there. It might be a little brighter right on the uh, lighthouse than it actually was. but this light was a little more prominent and warm like it is now. Uh, the sky in this area here was a little warmer like it is now, and everything else was pretty cool. Uh, so we'll do a before after. There's before, and there's after. Before, after. So there's my edit on the uh, landscape image, and I wanted to make note of those things that have changed from the first beta I used to this, the current beta. Um, specifically, just remember that um, when you're getting a white and black point, you just have to tap the J key to turn on the uh, clipping indicators. And you'll get red when you're clipping the highlights, and you'll get blue overlaid where you're clipping the shadows. Then click or tap the J key again to turn off those clipping indicators. And also, these local adjustments, um, I'm going to stay on top of this. Um, like I said, they remove some of the choices that were there. Not really sure what's going on there. I hope to find out very soon. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.